OK, so turn down your central heating to 19 degrees C in the winter. Eat less red meat, ditch your car for an electric one and fly less. Those are some of the things we will all have to do if we want to tackle climate change and get greenhouse gases down to virtually zero by 2050. And if we do that, we can all help save the planet and have cleaner air. That's according to an independent report today. Here are some more of the details. The Committee on Climate Change, which advises the government, says the UK should lead the global fight against climate change by cutting greenhouse gases to nearly zero by 2050. And this is how they suggest we do it. Our cars will need to be electric, and the sale of petrol cars should be banned from 2030, ten years earlier than the government date of 2040. We'll have to fly less. At home, we'll be asked to turn down the central heating to 19 degrees Celsius and insulate our houses properly. And we'll have to convert our natural gas boilers to hydrogen boilers. The report says we all need to eat less meat and dairy. We'll have to get much better at sorting out our waste at home to make sure no biodegradable material like leftover foods end up in landfill. But the main emphasis is on big business, making significant changes like decarbonising industry and using carbon capture technology, where CO2 is captured and isolated rather than being released into the atmosphere. The committee says farmers have largely escaped attention on climate change, but not anymore, because agriculture is a major producer of greenhouse gases. Farmers will need to turn more of their land over to woodland and feed their cattle special diets to reduce the amount of methane that they burp into the atmosphere. Let's talk about this now with Rain Newton-Smith, Chief Economist at the Confederation of British Industry, CBI, and to Fahana, to, to Fahana Yamin, who is from Extinction Rebellion. Uh, as you know, they've been recently been protesting about the slow pace of change when it comes to emissions. Uh, welcome, both of you. Let me start with you, Rain Newton-Smith from the CBI. So is business willing to spend the money to go for net zero emissions by 2050? Look, I think one of the most important things that this report sets out is that this is not going to cost us a lot of money. In fact, it's a huge opportunity. But that only happens if we act now. If, we, if the government accepts this target and says, clearly commits to a net zero uh, target by 2050, and then we put the policies we need in place behind that, then businesses will absolutely rise to the challenge. They already have. Last year, over 50% of our electricity generation came from low carbon or nuclear uh, sources. That's because business has stepped up to the plate. We've seen a huge development in the solar energy uh, sector and offshore wind. And so businesses absolutely want to innovate uh, and meet this challenge. We all have to act. Right. We know that this is an emergency and we're all willing to play our part. Um, Fahana, let me ask you from Extinction Rebellion. We've heard the word emergency a number of times this week from various people and various politicians. This report today says we need to do this by 2050. Does that sound like an emergency to you? It's a bit too far away. It's very welcome and it's a little bit late. You know, Paris, the Paris Agreement in 2015 asked governments to look at trying to move to 1.5 and that was uh, four years ago. So uh, we are already in a, you know, in emergency mode. The Houses of Parliament yesterday passed the motion recognising that. That's commendable. But the 2050 date, which I myself campaigned for, by the way, very intensively in the run-up to Paris and which the small islands championed, who I acted for, is not enough. So what date should it be? It should be much nearer 2030, 2025, some, something around that range because we have to let me explain it just but not by the numbers you know the climate change committee report is saying essentially the carbon cake that's left is three tiers and what we're saying is actually it's not you haven't got the top two tiers left and you know when you go to a wedding you're looking at this three-tiered cake thinking you know I'll get quite a big slice of that cake actually if it's one tier left only you're not going to get a big slice of that and that's the basic difference the committee is coming out and saying and sort of assuming that the carbon budget is much bigger than it is and it isn't. OK. Um, do you think some of your members, Rain, Newton, Smith, are going to face uh, economic difficulties, challenges as a result of these kind of targets, particularly if the government t does take some of these recommendations on board? 
I think it's really about how we act now. And it, look, if policy, if the government put in a clear framework, if they, you know, they've already made some steps. So they said that all new build homes need to be sourced from renewable energy by 2025. But we need to think about our existing homes. We know that, you know, they're they're drafty. They're not. Uh, sort of fit for a low carbon or zero carbon world. So now we need to think about um, how we help consumers shift, but also how businesses uh, provide some of the technologies. And I think if you have, I think what this report is really saying is if you have the clear policy frameworks, um, then you can actually do this with out costing industry anything and, and I mean I, are, I, are you serious are you realistically saying that that is plausible because the report today says firms at risk will need help from the Treasury yeah I, I think so what you will need to have you know you need to have the government setting the right carbon price you need to have uh, you need to support some industries and also some households you know changing to you know if you put in a new a new boiler that's expensive so you know, we do need to look at how we support particularly low income households make this transition. But I think it's also a big opportunity. I think what's clear is that we would be the first major advanced economy to set a net zero uh, carbon target. And so therefore we can be one of the countries that really helps to generate these new technologies because everyone around the world is going to need these low carbon technologies. Okay. And you can really be at the forefront of okay. that. People watching now and listening to you and perhaps uh, many who supported your protests in recent weeks, some people perhaps didn't like the tactics, but maybe thought the message was a good one to be banging home and achieving that meeting with the Environment Secretary. What radical changes will they need to make? And is it all about sacrifice? What are the benefits? There's huge benefits. And I think that what people need to understand is taking climate action is going to help generate the huge number about half a million clean new jobs here not jobs that will go to china or elsewhere these will be jobs here and partly you know in response to rain why not have an emergency energy efficiency act why isn't that proposed why are we leaving it you know to consumers and the existing market mechanisms which haven't worked frankly at the speed and scale that we would like why are we leaving it to individuals to do that why well, not well, have well, the, well, the well, government say we are going to show leadership yeah. we're going to set well, one up of the a reasons framework. as you know is that the, the, the yeah. you know the political system that we have in this country is short term it's 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 elections every five years so what is the incentive when you're thinking uh, you know about your political survival t to plan something for 25 years 30 we, years we've got 23 million homes that need rapid you know energy efficiency improvements you mean you mean insulation do you insulation yeah. and everything else and they could be deep retrofitted have the solar panels done all at the same time you see yeah and so who, we can who, make, judge, and who would we pay can for make that? that we can make that and that's what the government needs to do it needs to devote resources and when you're in an emergency mode fund which it. we are now yeah. funded mm. so the if you look at what's happening you know the treasury isn't giving money to these sorts of things it's rapidly taking them away it's giving money to roads it's telling defra don't ask for more money in the comprehensive spending review for example so i think that the emergency motion yesterday and michael goes very welcome recognition in parliament that he accepts that we're in emergency requires some kind of action which is commensurate to that mm. and for example you know tackling em uh, energy efficiency in a joined up whole of government way with the resources attached to it instead of flapping around which is what we've done right and trying to think the carbon price is going to send the signal then it will be enough and then individual consumers will act accordingly that doesn't work in an emergency scale and that's what we've learned from the last two decades of climate policy is actually you need regulation and leadership by governments and don't leave it all alone to me you to try and find the energy efficiency provider a lot of people live in you know rented accommodation for them it just doesn't work you know okay. the incentives are not there so that's what we're saying and we think that that will also generate you know um, uh, clean air it's going to make us healthier it's going to reduce respiratory diseases and asthma all mm -hmm. of these things are linked mm -hmm. so climate action isn't a burden it is a cake frankly in terms okay. of the budget but it's Climate action itself can solve many different problems. A couple of messages. Uh, this text says the government's stating the obvious once again about what they think we need to do to combat climate change. Actually, this report today is not from the government. It's from the Committee on Climate Change, which is an independent group that advises the government on this issue. Uh, whilst we can do all the things they have stated, it is the big companies that can make the biggest impact. Uh, want people um, to stop using 
want people to stop you sorry i'm just going to finish these messages right if i may want people to stop using plastic carrier bags stop making them it's not rocket science hazel says it's a global issue can only be tackled globally what are china india us etc doing uh and this texter points out the the kind of the, the gap between the rhetoric and the action um in that you might hear politicians saying Yes, we need to go for this. And then they are also the ones who voted for expanding Heathrow. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Uh, what I really want to know from you is what you are doing, if anything, uh, to try to uh, help cut greenhouse emissions in this country. There's lots of information about the changes we all need to make, apparently, to make our lives, to make our lives help reduce the impact of climate change, all on the BBC News website, bbc.co.uk forward slash news.